In this episode, I'm gonna teach you another way to process emotions. It's something you can do on your own, and it's a powerful way to work through the jumble of thoughts and emotions that are all up in your head. So today, you're gonna to learn how to journal for depression and anxiety. Now, therapists have this phrase, make the implicit explicit, and it's basically a terrible phrase because it sounds like you're gonna be doing something wrong. But all these academics, all they're trying to say is to take something that's inside your head, something that's, you know, cloudy and vague and, you know, implied, and to make it clear and solid and like external, something you can like physically touch almost. And when you look at all the hundreds of types of therapy, one thing that is common among them is this process of making the implicit explicit, taking the vague and making it solid. And this is a really effective way to solve problems, to, to res resolve these internal conflicts and to soothe painful emotions like depression or anxiety. And the common way that you do this is by talking about it, right? By trying to explain it or describe it out loud to your therapist. But there's a ton of other ways to do it too. And if you learn these skills, it's kind of like learning some ways to do a little bit of self-therapy. So today I'm going to teach you six ways you can improve your mental health through writing. When I was serving in Argentina, I carried an acorn in my bag to remind me that inside of an acorn is a giant oak tree waiting to grow. There is massive potential inside, but you can't take an acorn and turn it into an oak overnight. Now, people often think that if you want to improve your life, you need to make these huge changes or have an epiphany, but that is just not how growth really works, and it's not sustainable. Sustainable growth looks like one small change at a time that you repeat until it becomes part of you. Just like how you can't force an acorn to turn into an oak tree, you can't force your thoughts and your emotions to change all at once. So just start building these daily habits that make a 1% difference. If you can only change 1% of each day, by the end of the year you'll have created massive growth. So I made this small little journal. It's called the Oak in the Acorn. And it's just a little daily check-in journal to help you build up those tiny little habits that make a huge difference at improving mental health. It probably takes two to four minutes a day and it just helps you look for the good and express gratitude and check in with, with your feelings. And it's also got some handy little reference guides with lists of emotions and values and like just simple things you can do each day to improve your health. So if you'd like to buy the digital Digital download and print this little guy at home, check out the merch shelf below. Okay, back to the video where you're gonna learn six ways to journal for mental health. Okay, so when you have a lot of pain or distress, when you're anxious or upset or overwhelmed, it's easy to feel like a situation is hopeless or to feel conflicted about what action to take. So I've seen this with my client, right? Like, should I be selfless with my teenager and serve and love them? Or should I set boundaries and demand that they treat me with respect, right? Like things can feel really confusing. Or sometimes a problem is so overwhelming that we can't even figure out what's wrong. Going to a therapist can help you sort through all these confusing thoughts and feelings, and of course, I recommend that. But most people only see a therapist one hour a week, and some people can't get to a therapist. So here are six easy ways to sort through your issues on your own. Okay, so let's start with the first, journaling. Journaling is really simple. You just write about what you're feeling or thinking or experiencing. Journaling can help you track your moods and identify triggering situations. It can also help decrease anxiety and stress, and it can help you gain a clearer perspective on your challenges. Journaling has been shown to help your physical health too. It can lower blood pressure, it can help your immune system, and it can improve liver function. Writing can help you get to know yourself better and improve your relationships, and journaling has been shown to improve mood and fight depression. Matthew Lieberman, a psychologist at UCLA said, brain scans on volunteers showed that putting feelings down on paper reduces activity in a part of the brain called the amygdala, which is responsible for controlling the intensity of our emotions. Men seemed to benefit from writing about their feelings more than women, and writing by hand had a bigger effect than typing. Journaling has been shown to help people process trauma. In a study with college students, Prompting these students to write about stressful or traumatic events helped them reduce stress, improve their mood, and even have better physical health. 
Other studies have shown that writing about your stress helps people with asthma improve lung functioning and people with rheumatoid arthritis decrease their symptoms of arthritis. So the simple act of taking 10 minutes every day to write about how you're feeling can be really helpful to your mental and physical health. Okay, the second technique is the brain dump. I made a short video that goes into more detail, but the basic idea behind the brain dump is that when you're feeling really intense emotions or when you're overwhelmed or upset, it can be helpful to just take everything in your brain and put it down on paper. For me, when I brain dump, I actually use a computer because I can type faster than I can write. And the goal is not to make some beautiful, cohesive narrative, but to just dump your thoughts down into words. Don't worry about spelling or grammar, just get your ideas out of your head and onto paper. Now you'll probably notice that if you do this, you'll feel an immediate sense of relief, or at the very least, some clarity. Okay, the third way to process emotions through writing is to make a diagram. I do this in almost every therapy session. My clients come in with complicated and complex problems, and I can't even keep track of all the issues that come up in one session. It's hard to know what to work on first. So in almost every session, I'm using the whiteboard or a piece of paper to keep track of ideas. Sometimes we make lists together, sometimes we write down all the separate problems and just use that to keep our focus on, you know, just one of them at a time. Um, I'll use charts to help a client clarify what's going on. And honestly, I could not function as a therapist without uh, drawing, writing, or listing things out in a session. So this is a skill that I encourage everyone to try, right? Make a diagram or a chart exploring your problem and see if that helps bring you some clarity. Okay, the next activity is writing a letter you won't send. So I use this activity quite frequently with teenagers and uh, with trauma survivors. So sometimes you have these things you want to say, but you'll never get a chance to say them. Maybe your parents just aren't able to hear what you need, or your abuser will never be in a place to take accountability for what they've done. Um, maybe the person you need to reconcile with is dead or you have no way to reach them. Or maybe you just have things to say, but you're not ready for anyone to know them yet. So in this situation, writing a letter that you never send can be a way for you to personally get some closure on a situation. It helps you express your needs and your wants and your wishes without expecting any kind of change on their part. So write the letter, tell them what you need to say, and then afterwards you can burn it or flush it down the toilet or save it, or if you choose, you can mail it, whatever you want. But it's the process of expression that leads to healing. Or, you know, to use that terrible therapist term, make the implicit explicit. Write it down in a letter you're never gonna send. Okay, next option. The next way you can process anxiety and depression and other strong emotions through writing is to clarify your locus of control. This is really simple, but really powerful. Just make a chart with three columns. In one column, write about what's in your control. In the other, write about what's out of your control. And in the middle, write about the things that you can influence, but you can't control. Now, again, I made a longer video about this, but it's a pretty straightforward concept with some really powerful outcomes. It can help you decrease your stress and anxiety, and it can help you find clarity about what action to take and what to let go of. Okay, the next way to process Intense emotions is to write an alternate version of a situation. What we focus on, we get more of. So instead of constantly focusing on problems, this writing activity encourages you to bring your attention to solutions, to the things you want more of in your life. So write about how you would like things to be going. Write in detail about how you would like to be feeling and how you would like to be handling a situation. Write about how it would be different if you were living the life that you valued. Spend time writing an alternate version of how you would be acting or feeling and focus on the things that are in your control instead of dwelling on what you wish would change that's outside of your control. So for example, let's say you're in an unhappy relationship. When you write out this idea, you could choose a couple of alternate endings. One may look like writing about yourself expressing gratitude or writing about yourself feeling forgiveness or writing about yourself falling back in love with your spouse and writing about seeing the positive in your spouse. You may write about those feelings of warmth and humor that you used to have in the relationship. So it's basically just bringing to mind the things that you value and that you love about yourself and your spouse. Or you could write about what it would look like if you got the courage to leave an abusive relationship. What it would look like if you had healthy boundaries, what you would say and what you would do. 
uh, what, what you would do if you believed in yourself and if you believed in your right to be loved and to be safe. Write about the actions you would take to get your life back and live your dream. Okay, so there you have it. Six ways to help you process through your thoughts and emotions with just a pencil and paper. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching and take care.